The tower is called 53 West 53rd, after the bustling Manhattan street it sits on. But building it here will push Tim and the team to their limit. Our building takes up the entire footprint of our site. On the west side, we've got a, a high-rise commercial office tower right against the site. On the east side, we've got one of the busiest museums in the world. On 53rd Street, we've got a subway tunnel right underneath our feet. So we've got two subway tubes immediately adjacent to the site. You have to deal with it. The buildings are going to get built. We just have to figure out how, how, how exactly to do it. This is their plan. First, they must excavate the foundations for the tower. They must drill 33 concrete pillars up to 70 feet deep into the bedrock, avoiding the subway beneath. They'll build each floor with wooden molds, then fill the molds with colossal amounts of steel and concrete to form the strongest possible structure, one floor every five days. Halfway up the tower, they must build three gigantic support floors. These will tie the rigid core of the tower to the exterior walls and help them stand up to strong winds. They must install over 5,000 panels of aluminium and glass to create the tower's skin, mimicking the shape of its sloping columns. Workers will top the tower off with five glass and steel pyramids to complete 53 West 53rd's iconic look. We've got a big challenge ahead of us, but we feel we'll stay ahead of it. The first step is to install a crane to piece together the tower's frame. They can't park the crane on the busy street, so they must assemble it right in the middle of the site. With the crane in place, the lower floors begin to rise around it. Tim's team has just 55 months to build and fit out the tower so residents can move in on time. There's no room for delays. Schedule is everything. We're running a business here. It takes two years to build just the first 30 floors. Now, as the tower rises taller and starts to taper, closing in on itself, the real challenges begin. Traditional skyscrapers are held up by dozens of internal columns. These run through the building and leave the exterior walls free to be clad entirely with glass. But this tower has a tiny footprint and narrows towards its peak. Floor space is precious and support columns would eat it up. So this is their innovative plan. To maximize the floor space, the tower's architects have taken the bold decision not to use internal columns. Instead, they'll direct much of the structural support into a steel and concrete exterior frame called a diagrid, the largest of its type ever attempted. Knitting all this steel together has been a problem for the tower's consulting engineers, Steve Bongiorno and Jamie Silva. The problem is when you converge to a joint, uh, now you have individual reinforcing bars that need to kind of connect and consolidate into a, uh, uh, into a joint. If you were to reinforce one of those joints with uh, the standard uh, rebar, you would have very little room. Steve and Jamie plan to reinforce each diagrid junction with a precise amount of steel. If three or more diagrids overlap, the steelwork required simply won't fit inside the building. To solve this, they've designed a clever junction called a node. They are huge slabs of three-inch thick steel covered with precisely angled sockets, loaded with super high-strength steel bars. The steel bars must be the exact length and angle to slot into the structure's steel skeleton. If any bar doesn't align perfectly, the node won't fit and the tower won't be strong enough. But with 31 perfectly designed nodes, every part of 53 West 53rd's exterior frame should channel the weight of the building to the foundations. 
Expert welders are fabricating the nodes at this workshop, 20 miles northwest of Manhattan in New Jersey. It's taken months of work to craft these specially designed nodes with a perfect combination of strength and precision. You're looking at what's really holding up this building right here in this amount of space. This is the first time this has been done in a, in a concrete building. By using these nodes in a diagrid, we're able to safely channel the loads coming down through the building and into the foundation. It would be impossible to build this tower without these nodes. But if the nodes don't fit together, it's back to the drawing board. This is basically one of these square connectors loose. Uh, and, you know, the bars connect into these connections. When you get out there, these six bars have to match up pretty much exactly with six bars coming up out of the concrete. Accuracy and precision is paramount to, to having these connections work. How we doing? Good, good. Right now, we, we can't go any higher until those nodes go in place. This floor is a big test for the experimental nodes. We don't have nodes on every floor. This floor happens to have three. So it's critical that they fit in place. If something went wrong and we can't fit it in. That's just delaying the progress of the deck. Hey, Tom, Steve, have you seen Devin yet? Steve Bongiorno is on site to make sure his nodes slot into place. The heavier one today is about 13,000 pounds, six and a half tons. Keep coming down. John Renner provides Steve's eyes on the ground. It's all about the angle to get him inside the column. All these columns come on different angles. It won't fit unless it's connected the right way. All right, Nick, easy up on the line. This node weighs 6,000 pounds. It's far too heavy to wrangle once in the air. They must raise it at just the right angle so it slots in snug first time. You got about four or five feet of slack. Keep coming left, Nick. Two, one. Up, 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 Nicky. Up, up, up. Take it, Nicky. All you. This is the crucial moment they find out if the nodes work and if this pioneering way to strengthen a skyscraper can succeed. You can see it there flying in the air. Its 10 steel bars must land precisely into connectors up top. But just as they approach the drop zone. Actually, now, now that I'm looking down there, this thing is way off. They hit a glitch. Yeah. Something doesn't look right. I'm worried about the bottom. Oh, one of them's not going to be able to go. None of the steel bars line up in the right position. This bar can't go anymore. It's, it's hitting something up there. That's a major problem. That's a, it's a major problem. What, once he welds that on, how are they going to get it down? I got to come all up this one. Hold on one second. I don't know how they're going to get this in. It's a foot longer than it should be. And we don't have that kind of adjustment. Yeah. I got one, I got one. Not easy building any building. A building like this, it's, uh, it's extra hard. This one, we should be able to go up a little bit. Is it going to be enough? Two steel reinforcing bars are too long, which means the crucial node that holds the frame of the skyscraper together won't slot into place. This was a problem of our making. We're supposed to get a final survey at this point, but that survey information never got back to the computer. Everything was done to the right length. It's just starting from a point that was higher than it was supposed to be. If they can't get all six bars on this node to fit into these connector joints, construction work may have to shut down, setting the entire project back months.